for today's video. It's a windy one here. Check it out, bro. Got the surfer dude right here next to Flagler. Welcome to the Flagler District and boardwalk of New Smyrna Beach, Florida. My first time here. Yeah, for today's real life creature feature, Chris the girl and I are gonna hit up some roadside attractions and do some spooky stuff. It's uh, two of the things we love. Yep. Roadside attractions and monsters. We're talking about real life monsters, bro. The Atlantic Ocean to the right beyond the parking lot. We just parked, 20 bucks all day for parking. Awesome ocean breeze tiki bar over here. This is really setting the vibe. And as you can see, those flags in the distance, they're rolling, man. It's windy. We could have parked out on the beach, but we decided just to park before it, but we're gonna head out there now. Welcome to the deadliest beach in America, folks. And the sign says, Volusia County. Welcome to Volusia County, Florida. This is where you drive out on the beach. Always shocks me to see the cars out on the beach. Growing up on West Coast, Florida, I always forget that you can do this over here, here in the Daytona Beach area. Right here on the boardwalk, this brick boardwalk, this gnarly bro, this gnarly surfboard. It's a monument, check it out. It's to commemorate all the surfers. On this site in the early 1960s, the modern era of surfing was born in New Smyrna Beach. I am Tampa Jay, this is Chris the girl. We have traveled all the way from Tampa this morning, about a two and a half hour drive to come check out the deadliest beach in America. Just two days ago, this all popped up in our feed yesterday, they announced that, they announced the top 10 deadliest beaches in America and New Smyrna was number one. And there's quite a few reasons why it's the deadliest beach. It will be part of the subject matter today. Chris the girl is actually doing a whole video on that subject matter and it does pertain to this right here. Shark happens and it's happened 32 times. Shark attacks 32 times here on in this vicinity on the beach. And also hurricanes and surfing fatalities. See the surfboard right there? That has something to do with it as well. Seven out of 10 deadliest beaches in America are in Florida, by the way. So right here. This is number one. Okay, there's much ahead. There's, there's all kinds of things we're gonna do today around the Smyrna area. It's been a while since I've up, updated the Florida Roadside Attraction Series, which I which I began back in 2020. We've done almost, we've done over 60 videos. So we're gonna kinda do something a little creepy, a little real life monster type of thing, slash just explore New Smyrna. Gonna have fun with it. And uh, here we go, there's Munch Ahead. Munch Shark Ahead. Happens. Shark happens, bro. So does surfing, there goes an airplane. Oh, a helicopter, look at that. Is that Magna P.I.? No, this ain't Hawaii. <laughs> Yo, Pee Wee, I found your bike, man. Who knew it was all the way out here at the deadliest beach in America. Quite a bit of traffic on the sands right now. Gotta get a little closer to the waves. Not too many people out there swimming because that Atlantic water is like, I'm sure it's like in the 40s right now. Maybe colder than that. What do you think? It's gotta be cold. It's gotta be pretty cold. Think there's any sharks out there? Inevitably, I think there is, yeah. Supposedly, Supposedly a lot. Yeah. All right, let's get closer to that deadly water. Wow, those waves are ferocious. Oh, there's a surfer out here too. All right, here we are. Check it out, Mother Mother Ocean right here, the Atlantic. As I was saying, welcome to the deadliest beach in America as of a few days ago. You may have seen it in all the headlines. Uh, a lot of news, uh, I wanna say companies, but news media outlets picked up the story about the top 10 deadliest beaches in America. New Smyrna, number one, because of its surfing fatalities. I think there has been a total of nine out here. 32 shark attacks, not deaths. Kind of weird that they call it the deadliest when no one's actually died from a, a shark bite out here. Pretty close though. And hurricanes have taken the lives, so they, all the, the technical and all that stuff is out there and Chris the Girl is doing an entire video on the details of the shark attacks and whatnot of the deadliest beach in America. So go, so go check out her video. There'll be a link in the description below, but yeah, very, uh, very crazy that 
here we go again. Florida taking the number one title uh, seven times in a row for the deadliest beaches in America. There's a lot of beach around Florida, so I guess it makes sense. We got a lot of tourists coming out here all the time, so there's a lot of sharks in the water, so it, it just kind of, it's probably just science, the reason why there's so many shark attacks, just because there's more people going in the water, dipping their toes in their sand down here in Florida, or their vans in the sand like I'm doing. Yep, not going out in the water today, not surfing, bro, especially when there's tons of sharks out there. Not happening. No way. I'm watching your stuff. I'm doing a good job. I think. Oh, I see the shivering. Your teeth are, oh no. No. Go fast. No. I don't want to get my vans wet. Uh-oh. I'm saving your back, Chris. It's coming in close. I got it. And now back up on the boardwalk. Technically, it's a brick walk, though. There's no boards, it's a brick. Cool pavilion here, just beyond the lifeguard shack. You're walking off, or you're walking up to find somewhere to wipe your feet off. You got all the sand, I got you. Underneath this long pavilion here, it's old. It's got some age to it. If you look up in the rafters, you can tell. Look at that. See some rust on the bolts there? Oh yeah. And being the deadliest beach in America, their safety patrol is on high alert. I mean, they're high. That lifeguard shack is way up there. That person's looking left and right constantly. And I think, I think they have cameras all along the beach too. There's also a smaller lifeguard shack right down here. Someone checking it out there. Yeah, look at the wind through the flag on the lifeguard shack. It's coming in strong. Coming in fast. Ready to wash them, uh, those little, those little titties off? Yeah. I don't think I should wash my vans. That might, that might get annoying later. There's one, two, three, four, five wash stations. There you go, right before the Lucia County Beach Safety and Ocean Rescue. This looks like their main hub right here. Is it New Smyrna? Is it New Smyrna? Is it New Smyrna? Tomato, tomato. Someone will always correct me. They will. Walking down historic Flagler Avenue. Check it out, there's a shark right there. He's looking right at you. Yes, I'm talking to you. Yes, you. Nope, you. He's looking at you. The blackest eyes, a doll's eyes. Chris, whatever you do, don't look over here. It's a wet environment with <laughs> an octopus. Ugh. Have to point out this classic looking motel. This is the Seahorse Inn right here on Flagler Avenue. I like how vibrant the colors are. Purple, yellow, blue, and pink all the way down, I think. The Seahorse Inn's got jokes. Check it out. What are a shark's two most favorite words? Man overboard. Ha ha ha. Oh, there's a Kennedy Space Center astronaut right there in the window. Check it out. He was eyeing us the whole time, look at that. Inside this bar, like right inside, this creepy peanut guy. Look at that. He's missing an arm. No! I don't think that's the planters dude. It's his bar, thanks Chris. We're standing below Peanut's sports bar. Mr. Peanut, creepy peanut. In the window of the Beachside Tavern. I like how it's spelled with a Y. I see, I see what they're doing there. There's a mermaid surrounded by flamingos. Oh, and they're doing their little, their like, their poses, like their own poses there. That's amazing. Oh, and I want these, how much are they? 65 bucks, it's totally worth it. What do you think? Yeah. yeah. Shark bite capital of the world. That, yeah, I would think so. Need a deadliest beach in the USA shirt now. All right, now we're leaving the beach, heading to our next stop, right inside here in Smyrna Beach. This is uh, this is a bit creepy. Wait till you see this, watch your head. Now going down the back streets of New Smyrna Beach, looking for our next destination. All right, now on foot. Okay, check this out. First off, just focus your eyes right here. We'll get a whole lot closer in a moment, but I wanna set this up properly. So back in 1860, there was a man by the name of Charles Dummett, and he died right there in that spot. 
and he's also buried right there in that spot. This is a grave in the middle of the road right here on Cornova. We're about a mile from the beach. We just drove up this street back here and we came to this grave. There's also a black cat walking sure in the background is. right now. Wow. Ooh. We're gonna get closer to the grave and tell you more about it. I'm waiting for that cat to cross the road. There, it made it, it cleared it. And approaching the grave, check it out. This is also not only a black cat crossing, but a black turtle crossing. It says it right there. And here you are, check it out. There's a puppy dog on top of the tombstone there. Hey little puppy. I don't know if we can read the inscription here. I'll try it, you gotta be careful, because this is a road. We're in the middle of the road, check this out. Right by the tires right there, be careful. Don't know if we can read that, but I'm gonna try to. Stepped up off of the road here, there's a little pathway past the little puppy here on the tombstone that is almost not there anymore. It looks like it's uh, broken off there in a few pieces. Kind of reminds me of the uh, Grail Stone from Indiana Jones. But you can barely make it out. It says sacred to the something, can't make out that part, but it definitely says Charles Grummet, born August 18th, 1844, died April 23rd, 1860. That would have made him 16 years old, just a teenager. And the story goes that Charles died right here. He went out hunting and all it says is that he had a hunting accident. So I can only think that maybe he shot himself. Um, obviously, incidentally, maybe a ricochet or something, maybe the gun went off, but he died right here. And the family and all of the community decided to bury him right here in the middle of the road. Now that, ugh, that's kind of creepy. Uh, rest in peace, Charles. Uh, thanks for having us, man. I don't know if he still haunts this place. I don't know if you can See his spirit walking around here, maybe. Maybe you can. I couldn't find any stories like that online. But uh, definitely very eerie and very creepy to have a grave right here in the middle of the road. Charles, dumb it. Right here in Smyrna Beach. Now, if this is the deadliest beach in all of America, um, there's some really creepy things going on around here. Uh, not too far from here, Casadega with the two ley lines. Uh, the fault lines, yeah. Uh, the dead zone. The dead zone Pinky. Where they saw Pinky, we learned all this from Mark yeah. Muncy, by the way. There's a lot of weird things. Um, and we'll get there eventually, not all in this video, but we're gonna be hitting this area on Florida roadside attractions, the East Coast Florida, and some creepy things very heavily. But very cool to see the grave in the middle of the road right here, very creepy. And I don't know why they placed the puppy dog there. Maybe he had his hunting dog with him, his dog. I don't know, maybe he was buried with them too. I think what's kind of interesting about this too is not only is there a grave in the middle of the road, but how often is someone buried where, where they, they die? Were, where they passed away. Okay, so yeah. that's two really kind of weird things in and of themselves. And to have them both be right here. And as we said, in New Smyrna, deadliest beach. Yeah, good it's, point, Chris the girl. Just, it's interesting, yeah. Some creepy things going on here in New Smyrna. The grave in the middle of the road, Charles Dummett. Ooh. And just think, all of the cars passing here and golf carts. Turtles. Turtles, black cats. This might be one of the most visited grave sites. It might be. And also, he's got neighbors all the way around. And it's very peaceful and beautiful, so. Honestly, I wouldn't mind being buried in the middle of the road somewhere. I don't wanna die in the middle of the road somewhere. Poor guy. Thanks for letting us visit you. Thank you so much, Mr. Dummett. Really appreciate you. Also, there's a house for sale behind me. And uh, they're having an open house right over here. Pretty cool. Oh, the black cat's back. Look, babe. It's crossing back over the street. All right, now heading back over to the mainland. Like this mural here on the side of the building, just stopped here on the side of the street. Check it out. Got the Flagler Avenue sign. Also the bridge. And it looks like a 57 Chevy Bel Air station wagon, maybe. 
the surfboard hanging out. So cool. And there's some kind of a town festival going down over there on Canal Street, so it was hard to find parking. Parallel Park, yeah, did it. It's a nice spot, it's one of my best though. I got really close to the curb. Check it out, like less than two inches. I did good, did really good. Did way better than I ever could, that's for sure. <laughs> Your turn next time. Nope, no nope. All right, going up the stone pathway. Now there's several things this thing you're about to look at is called. One being a fort, an old fort. Check it out as it's coming into frame. This is the foundation, the base of what is said to be an old fort, old fort ruins. Check it out, it's got a moat around it, a little trench here, all the way around it. And I believe you can climb down in there if you wanted to, if you wanted to get a little, uh, you think? Yeah, I mean, whoa, that's a, that's way down there. What do you think? I don't know if we should get down there, but I bet people have. Check it out. There's gotta be a historic marker, I believe. Oh, there's a rock right over there. And another rock, 1863 to 1963, to commemorate the 100th anniversary of the shelling and burning of the Sheldon House on this site, July 26th, uh, during the war between the states by Union gunboats um, out beyond in the ocean. So that sign is saying that during the Civil War on top of this foundation was a fort, a Confederate fort, and it was bombarded uh, back during the war. So that's one of three things I think used to sit here. Now I don't know if it was an actual fort, but it sounds like this was the foundation and whatever was on top of it, it wasn't as permanent or it was just plundered and taken out of. Could have been a wood structure. And here you go from this angle, there's also some steps here and another rock down here between the street and the fort wall. And facing out this way, that would that would be towards the beach. There's the inner, inner coastal, the Smyrna Beach Marine area right there. So here you go, check it out. Pretty cool, you don't see something like this every day. Just uh, a little miniature fort with a moat, almost like the base of an old castle. Not sh so sure how old it is, but we know it's been here since the 1860s at least. It looks like these used to be steps right here, and they've kind of eroded away, and that's how you would get down here along the moat. Check it out how narrow it is right through here. I'm sure at one time this was full of water. I could easily jump. Actually, yeah, I could go like right here and I could walk among the fort. Look at that. No reason to get down there. I mean, it'd be fun, but no point. Looks cool from this angle. All right, going down here to see what's on this rock out here. See what that says. This rock here, a little newer plaque, site of Sheldon's new Smyrna Hotel. So this is saying that at one time, a hotel used to sit on this foundation. The Coquina Foundation rests within a shell midden from the Tumacun Indian era. Mystery still surrounds the origin of this foundation. So when was this built? It's a mystery, but we do know that Jane and John Sheldon built a large hotel on this mound circa 1859. So that was before it became a fort. During the Civil War, the structure was destroyed by cannon fire from Union ships. After the Civil War, Jane Sheldon built a smaller structure that served as a pioneer general store, port collector's office, boarding house, and print shop, which published the Florida Star, one of the region's early newspapers. Structural problems forced the building's removal circa 1900. So there you go. There's also a sign right here before the steps that I walked down, historic site. Any person intentionally damaging this historic site is subject to arrest and conviction under Florida's uh, criminal mischief statute upon conviction of criminal mischief violators are subject to being sentenced up to a five year in prison and the imposition of $5,000 fine. Minors also lose driver's licenses. Oh, okay, so you don't wanna tamper with this. How often do you find a place so old and historic where there is no 
factual information, no clues on when exactly it was built. They used it a couple times, but as the plaque says over there, who built it? How did it get here? Who built this? Mystery. All right, kids, don't tamper with it. They'll throw you in jail, charge you $5,000, and take your driver license away. Don't do it. Looks like someone didn't listen right here. I see some graffiti. Wonder if they got caught. They're not driving if they did, bro. No way. I didn't catch the name of this park, but it's got some very gnarly oak trees in it, especially that one right there. That thing is old. Let's say it's over 100, maybe 200 years old. You ziggied it? Yep, Old Fort Park. Old Fort Park, Makes okay. Sense. That's what I caught. I'm like, I'm gonna yeah. go to that Old Fort Park. There you go. Nailed it. All right, pit stop, AKA potty break at the Publix. We're almost to our next destination. Actually, it's behind the Publix, not too far on mission. Yep. We've got a, a mission we, we've to got tend a to first. We've got mission inside of Publix, yeah. <laughs> Hold on, bro. Having a fun time, adventuring around as usual here in Smyrna. Good. What, what, what? You said it like five different ways. I know, I do that on purpose. <laughs> I am, uh, I do that because I know there's someone out there that's going to be like, it's pronounced this way, so I just yeah. pronounce it different ways. I've been ways. saying Smyrna this whole time. Smyrna? It could be wrong, I don't know. Whoa. In case you missed that video, I quit soda. And so yes. did you. Yes, no soda for no all soda. 2023, except for that one time. For I think when I go to the movies, though, when I get the popcorn, yeah, I, I told myself I'll, I'll reward myself. Definitely. Everyone deserves a cheat yeah. day. I can't go to the movies and mm -hmm. eat popcorn without soda. Hollywood, release a movie we want to see in the theaters. Right, there's nothing like anything that's like getting me there right now. Yeah. But come on, I want to eat some popcorn and drink some soda. Yeah. All right, just pulled out of the Publix down there. You got to come down Mission Road and you got to be observant because there is a quick turn in to this driveway, which will lead us to another set of ruins. Wait till you see these. Well, we haven't seen them yet, but I hope they're cool, bro. And here we are, check it out. Just beyond the parking lot here, the ruins of a sugar mill, old sugar mill. And we visited a couple old sugar mill, historic sugar mill sites before on this channel. Was just talking to Chris's parents the other day. They stopped by the Homosassa, the old Homosassa Springs, Yuli Springs sugar mill uh, the other day. So shout out to them, check it out. Back at another sugar mill. And there's some history right here. It says Risky Business, the Kruger de Peister Sugar Mill. No, not like Freddy Kruger, it's, it's spelled with a C. And before we approach the sugar mill, we've got some history on this plaque here. This is a painting done by John Rogers. It's called The Ruins of the Sugar House. This is supposed to be 1843 and also another photograph down here. Looks like it was taken probably mid last century. Not too much has changed from the time that photo was taken. Now this is a lot taller than the sugar mill. The walls are more intact than the one that I last visited. So this is pretty cool. The Kruger de Peister sugar mill. These walls are reminders of an agriculture venture gone up in smoke along with people's plans for taming the Florida frontier. In 1830, Henry Kruger and William de Peister acquired 600 acres near the village of New Smyrna borrowed money, secured machinery from New York, and established a sugar factory. Five years later, their plantation lay in ruins. In fact, Coquina ruins are the story of the site. The mill had little time to produce sugar or to repay investors before it was wrecked by the Seminoles. In December 1835, they ran off the overseer, burned the complex, and destroyed other plantations throughout the region. Just walked down the sidewalk, turning left right here, and check it out, there's like a well down here. And some ducks in the ground. This is cool. I like how it looks. It's very awesome. It's all caved in here. Check it out. And these are the giant iron kettles where they would have cooked the sugar. And I believe some are missing. There's a schematic over here that kind of shows you how the old sugar mill worked. And it says that this structure right here, this is where the boil was, the steam engine basically, that powered the whole plant. It was in here. It would have been sitting in there. You can kind of make out what's left 
of what used to be. This used to be the smokestack and the boiler was sat right here. And back there, basically a fireplace or the exhaust and all the me uh, mechanisms kind of sat in here as well. I'll show you the picture in a second, but I just wanted to show you the spot. There's a chunk of it. Ooh, look at here. Here's a chunk of it right here. This is the northwest corner. Just to put things into perspective, give you a full frame there. Visitors. In 1894, the Atlantic Monthly Magazine published a story about the ruins by a well-known travel writer, Bradford Torrey. Like the mill's dreamy setting and wildlife, and he also noted a curious claim that the structure had built had been built as a chapel, perhaps, by Columbus himself. What? Christopher Columbus? I don't think he ever came to Florida, did he? By 1941, a journalist by the name of Charles H. Coe had seen enough in a sketching critique of the so-called Spanish mission. Coe rejected that origin and argued for a 19th century sugar factory. Modern students of the ruins agree, but also credits Mrs. Connor with helping to preserve the special place. Ruins of the old Spanish mission. So I guess they used to say this was a, a mission right there. There she is. We found you. Yeah, I was looking for you. So this, do you know the history? Did you read the signs? Okay, so this was destroyed by the Seminole Indians. Okay. It was a plantation, and they destroyed it. And there was a rumor, uh, someone started the rumor that this was an old Spanish mission, and Columbus actually built it himself, Christopher Columbus. But as we know, Christopher Columbus didn't come this far yeah. into the New World, so. And here's the schematic. Now that you've seen it, we've walked around it, it should make sense. This is what was said to be the Spanish mission. It's an engine house, and there was the boiler. Now the one that your parents rolled by uh, last week, the one that we've been to before, that we were just talking about this, it still has the boiler in it and everything. That's cool. So yeah, if you go back to my uh, monkey bar video, when I visit the monkey bar, you can actually see the remnants of the Yuli, I think it's Yuli Springs sugar mill over there at Homo Sassy. You can actually see this portion, it's, it's still alive. And there's the kettles, which are right there. And then that room back there, that was the perjury. I, th I, th I think that's uh, more like a filter kind of system that would have been back there. And then there was a chimney snack, uh, snack stack there and a chimney stack there. Did you hear that? What was that? I don't know, I hear a lot of weird things. Yeah, I heard something back there. And as you can see, the plantation here was uh, ran by the enslaved. Now. Here's the similarity between the other sugar mill that was destroyed during the Civil War. It was also ran by slaves and it was destroyed by the Union troops. So here you go, you got the Seminole Indians destroying this mill and basically a straight line over to Homosassa Springs across the state. You have uh, the enslaved being freed by Union troops. So there you go, just, uh, just to point that out, that is real history, that is what happened. Um, this was a plantation and it was ran by the enslaved. And uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad that this is here so we can learn about it. And uh, it's weird that I felt like they tried to cover it up. They thought it was a chapel, but it wasn't. Yeah. It was a, they had no idea, but yeah, yeah. it was a, a sugar mill. What a weird and fascinating story. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I've been using this word all day, kukina. That is the type of stone of the former ruins or the previous ruins we just saw. Here it is. It is uh, Spanish for tiny shell, mm -hmm. quarried locally and elsewhere in Southeast. It contains mollusk shell fragments and quartz sand bound together by calcium carbonate. Centuries after the Spanish first used coquina in Florida, frontier Americans chose this building stone for their sugar factory. So there you go. That's what that's made out of. And uh, there you go. So uh, maybe the Spanish built that fort back there that's what i'm getting at maybe in my hand on my phone i have the map i'm showing you this to show you where we're going now if you look right here that's new smyrna beach here that's where we were before this stretch of beach over here technically it's ponce inlet but we're going over there because there's a couple things going on there 
you'll see when we get there but also that's where some of the sharks are known to swim mm -hmm. and uh, there there were some several attacks out there so we have to get on one and actually go through Port Orange almost up to Daytona and take a right and come back this way 30 minutes away and that looks fun downtown New Smyrna Beach look at that turning left on highway one or about to there's a ton of people down there muffler man muffler man he's on the sign with a muffler in his hand not the muffler man i'm looking for i'm talking about the roadside giants but still a muffler man gotta show it check this out had to do a yui to show you this classic dairy queen look at that neon sign there just north of new smyrna on us one and i want to point out that i just saw that the dairy queen from my hometown newcastle indiana is turning 72 years old this month uh, shout out to my mom who uh, worked at that dairy queen that was her first job this one's banging it's bumping now entering ponce inlet founded in 1887 and let there be lighthouse wow there's people up there Nice big uh, parking lot. We just turned uh, right off of Atlantic Drive and came down Lighthouse Way. And here it is. Holy cow. It is pretty tall. Yeah. They said it's the second uh, tallest lighthouse in the U.S. I want to point out that they have RV parking here, by the way. Mm -hmm. like nice long parking spots. You can make out the folks up there on the observation deck. It looks so tiny. What's up, Mr. Crow? They spotted me again. Alert! All right, folks, we realize there's two parking lots. This is the main one right here. Check this out. This looks a little nicer, doesn't it? Cool sign here. Check it out. Ponce de Leon Inlet Lighthouse, U.S. Lighthouse Service. All right, now that we found the right parking lot, here we are walking through the gates. It looks very colonial looking. All these brick buildings. This is a giant complex. Check this out. Welcome. Welcome to the Ponce de Leon Inlet Light Station. Our beautiful lighthouse has been shining since 1887 and is still a working navigational aid. It's a national historic landmark and one of the most complete and authentic large light stations remaining in the United States. The site is a self-supporting private museum, operated without funding from national, state, or local governments. We invite you to climb the tower's 203 steps to the main balcony to enjoy the fantastic views of the Atlantic Ocean, Ponce Inlet, and the surrounding waterways. You can also explore exhibits in the three keeper dwellings, our modern lighthouse lens museum, the nature trail, and more. And I see a lot of books that I own right here in the gift shop of the lighthouse, including Eerie Florida, Creepy Florida. Oh, I'm sorry, Freaky Florida. I would have Creepy in here somewhere, though. Shout out to Mark Muncy. And we got into much more than we bargained for. There is so much more here to see. I think we might have to come back, but I wanted to pay the th uh, $7 each admission price just so we could come inside. And uh, I'm going to go up to the top to give you a view. Check it out. Whoa! And they said everything out here is 100% original and in impeccable shape. Wow. The light hit the lighthouse as yeah, we entered. Look at that. Beautiful. Okay. I'm going up there. As Arnie said, what's eating Gilbert Grape? I want to go up there, Gilbert. These buildings absolutely beautiful this is a self-guided tour by the way they give you a little pamphlet here found this picture in the pamphlet they handed me when we paid for our tickets check this out this is a photograph of them building the tower in the 1880s here you go today 1887 then now different angle but that's right there check it out here I go all the way to the top Last lighthouse we went into, Carabelle, Florida, the Forgotten Coast. Coincidentally, wearing the shirt that I bought that day, right after I climbed the tower, my shark shirt. 
Look at this spiral staircase. All the way up. Look at that. Wow. Where do these stairs go? They go up. This thing is in such great shape. There's a few landings along the way. So you can catch your breath. Woo! Not even midway. Check this out. Earthquake. On August 31st, 1886, while this tower was under construction, and at about this height, the fourth strongest earthquake in American history struck Charleston, South Carolina. Lighthouse keepers all over the East Coast recorded the effects of the shock waves. But here at Ponce, no damage was recorded. And as I was reading that, you could tell I'm out of breath. Oh. Death of a keeper, Joseph B. Davis suffered a heart attack and died inside this tower in 1919, October 26th. Second assistant keeper Ben Stone came to investigate and found Davis's body and carried him down. And guess what? It's haunted by the ghost. And I say we're about three quarters of the way to the top. Actually, probably two thirds. That's a long way down. Don't want to drop anything right there. Woo! It's a mirror, these stairs getting narrower. Woo! All right, the final set right here. This is more like a ladder. Last set's always the steepest. Hello, Atlantic. Whoa, check it out. Daytona straight away. There's the west. Walk away, all the way around. I'm out of breath. Woo! This is Ponce Inlet. And across the way there, that's New Smyrna Beach, where we started the video on the other side of the inlet. There's the Atlantic. Wow. And look down, hold on, here you go. Way up here. Chris is down there, somewhere. She said she was gonna check out some of these houses. And right there, that's where we parked. That's the car right there. We walked all the way around this park to the other parking lot. Over this way, that's where the entrance is. It's about a quarter till five, the sun. Still got a, about an hour until it sets. Look at that sky. Looking back towards the, the main chunk of Florida. There's some, a couple boats going out there. Wow. Spirit back that way. What a view. Not too many people up here. You can actually go up uh, one more flight and we can check out the lens. Something we couldn't do when I went up to the top of the Carabel Lighthouse a couple months ago. We were up in Carabel on the Forgotten Coast spending our Thanksgiving weekend and I went up to uh, the lighthouse up there, up in the Panhandle. But we can actually go up in there and I'll get there in just a second. First, I just want to explore this a little more. This is the door I came out of. Look at that view out there. Chris, if you're watching, babe, I love you. <laughs> Look at this. This is awesome. Wow. Man, it feels good out here too. This is a perfect day for this. Florida. This is real Florida. Love it. Okay, going around this way. And looking out towards the, uh, this would be the southeast, the point here at Ponce Point. This area out here is where we're heading next. Chris wants to go out there and talk uh, more about the shark activity and how this uh, this point out here, and especially New Samaria Beach, has more shark activity than any other stretch of waters, uh, definitely in Florida and, and in the United States. So that's one reason, that's the main reason we came over here. And I saw that there was a lighthouse and I was like, man, I gotta check that out. So here I am, 
But yeah, right over here, the deadliest stretch of beach in the entire country. Hurricanes, surfing accidents, shark bites, you name it. Bird's eye view of it, right there in frame. Ooh, spooky. Okay, here, I thought we could get up there, but no, you can't. It looks like you could, but here's the actual lens at work. The Fresnel light. It's actually spinning right now. Look at that. A little lower. Let's see what's going on right here. It's being turned right there, and actually the mechanism it's right here below me. So cold. Here you go, Ponce Inlet Lighthouse. So this is the watch room. This is where the gentleman was found dead. Right here. Ooh. All right, about to go down, but one more bird's eye view before I do so. Check out the birds flying by. All right, there you go. Oh, there's some more birds over there. Flying towards Daytona. All right, back to the girl. Here we go. That's a long way down. Oh no. It'll go quicker, right? Yeah. yeah. Check this out. It's a pulley, a little hoist on this I-beam. That's how they would probably lower stuff up. And they can only come to this level, pull stuff up. Check it out. Whoa. And here we are, made it. Here you go. Chris the girl. There she is. Did you see me? All the way up there. So while you were up there, Tampa J, I found something deeply unsettling over here. Okay. Unsettling and sad and tragic and interesting, so. All right, we gotta show that. Yeah. What is this? Okay, I, I think I see it. I saw the sign, uh, Cuban rafts, okay, so. Cuban refugee rafts that have Whoa. washed ashore here. Yep. Just washed up, no people in them. And she's not wrong. Between 1966 and 1995, anyone who fled Cuba and reached the United States was allowed to pursue residency one year after their arrival. Many Cubans left the island and in small boats and rafts, hopping to reach international waters where they might be picked up and brought the rest of the way to freedom. The small size of the 1989-1994 rafts on display here suggests the occupants Hope that they would not have to travel the entire distance to the United States uh, in such tiny and fragile rafts. So these washed up without people, but these were from Cuba. And I'm noticing a small block engine in there. They used a car motor, a car motor for that boat. And wow, look at that. Viva two from a no la mia, el barco numero uno. I know I butchered that, but um, they were heading to Miami. Okay. Wow, this is, I've never seen anything like this up close. Here's one of the boats here. There's another raft over here. That one's more like a catamaran, like you'd see in Waterworld. That is a transmission to a car right there. These are, uh, it's got a stick shift. These are uh, car motors that they made into boats. Wow. Check this one out. It's got a little sail in it. It's two uh, big inner tubes, a couple of uh, two by fours, some oars, and this one over here. Wow, it's made out of, it looks like almost burlap sacks. It's got a little mast in it. The raft to your left was washed ashore in Volusia County in 1989. Clothing found on board suggests that children were among those on the raft. The orange life vest was left behind by the Coast Guard to indicate that these refugees were rescued at sea. So that's good. The raft on the right washed ashore in 1994. The 90 mile wide Florida Straits between Cuba and South Florida is treacherous and the fate of the individuals aboard this raft 
is unknown. Amazing. Heard about this, uh, read a lot about the uh, revolution in Cuba and Castro and people fleeing uh, the country and I've never seen it in the real. This is living history right here that, such a surprise. I'm glad you uh, found these. Yeah. I was just gonna make a quick trip to the top and out and I'm glad you walked over here. Yeah. It's really cool and I'm glad we documented it. It shows desperation. It shows a lot of things. It shows, wow, my life's so bad over here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna risk my life and get in a boat, handmade, go across the ocean, the Bermuda Triangle even, and hope that I make it. Man, makes me thankful for a lot of things. Yeah, it does. Sheds a light. Sheds a light. And check this, directly across the street from the lighthouse, hidden treasures, rum bar, and grill with a lighthouse up front and someone playing Wonderwall out at the dock. Nice little tiki bar. Look at that sky. Isn't that beautiful? Play some Wonderwall. Oasis. And there's a giant buccaneer over there. A roadside buccaneer. Arr, shiver me timber. Here go say hello, right? Hold on, wait for it. Ready? Maybe gonna be the one that saves me classic <laughs> you're a wonder wall right there you're a wonder wall i wouldn't call you a wall i'd call you a pirate standing is he wearing pants right i i'm not sure what's going on here yeah there's a lot going on here there's actually. a lot it's a cool place. Yeah. It smells good too. Okay, I, I know what's going on here. He has a hook for a hand, and there was a sword here. And the sword, the blade, broke off. So when I was we were looking at it out there, it looked it looked a little different. Yeah. Also he's got a hole in his show. What, what do we call him? I'm sure he's got a name. I'm sure he does. Comment below. It's a green-eyed pirate. Look at that. Kind of the shadow. Right here? A hidden treasure. And the squirrels of Bok Tower we have followed yeah. Chris and I. There's three of them right here. Yeah. Hey, crazy. buddy. There's a bunch of peanuts on the ground. Oh. Yeah. Is no this heaven? But peanuts. To a squirrel, it is. Yeah. This right here, the sign before these trees and these bunch of squirrels over here, talks about Jesse Lindsay Boat Ramp, which Chris is out there right now. We'll go there in a second. It's quite a beautiful view. Affectionately known as the giant of Ponce Park, Jesse Lindsay beamed as a six foot eight inch African American fishing guide shortly after establishing residency here in around 1909. Rarely seen without a fishing pole in his hands, Jesse was known for his tenacious work ethic and uncanny ability for finding good fishing spots no matter what the conditions were on the water. His reputation soon brought fishermen to seek him out as a guide, bringing new traffic to the Piketty Hotel, where he resided and worked as a handyman and fishing guide. According to the oral history, a sign in the Halifax River labeled U.S. Waters led Jesse to jokingly refer to this area as Us Waters. Set aside specifically for him and anyone lucky enough to be his friend, as you utilize the Jesse Lindsay boat ramp, consider the waters you travel through to be us waters. This photo courtesy of Ponce de Leon Inlet Lighthouse Preservation Association. Six foot eight. Good old Jesse Lindsay boat ramp. Right here in Ponce Inlet. You make that look so good. How about you share there little buddy? How about you share with good old Tampa J here? Give me some peanuts. I saw the peanut man earlier at the peanut bar. Hey. I think I know where you got that. Hey, wait, intruder alert. There's one coming this way. Oh, they're everywhere. It's infested with squirrels. All right. <laughs> There's one over there too. All right, heading into Lighthouse Point Park. Gonna take this boardwalk to the beach. I can hear the waves and I can see the moon. It's like straight out here. And stopped real quick to turn around. 
There's the lighthouse right there. Straight away from it. All right, here you go. See the moon? Look at this sunset behind us. Now this, this is Florida. Look at that. It's about six o'clock. 547. There you go, 547. Thank you. How magnificent. Absolutely heaven on earth. There goes the sun. And Chris the girl down on the beach finishing up her video. Make sure you go check it out. Can't wait to watch it myself. D diving deeper into the shark attacks and America's most deadly beach. I don't, wow, it's it, it's always crazy how these things happen. How can a place this beautiful, one of the most beautiful places I've been, I almost forgot where we were. How is this deadly? Wow, isn't it crazy how life works? Amazing. Look at that sky. Not a soul on this beach right now, but Chris and I, at least this portion of it, this stretch of it. sandal down bro I think I found the other one that's a left foot there's the right foot bro oh no are there sharks out there oh yes there is oh no I hope they didn't oh that's a sad thought uh, we'll just say that didn't happen no way who owns these sandals and did they go a surf? Uh oh. Not good. 
And welcome to the end of the video. I have never been in such uh, wow, this is a great place right here. Yeah. We have it all to ourselves. We gotta end it right here. The deadliest beach in all of America. I don't believe it right here. Sure, sure seems very peaceful now, doesn't it? I know. It? Yeah. Sun setting in the background. I think we could have I could have popped the question here. Yeah, it would have been it would have been nice, but you did it in the right spot. A Bach Tower. There's no squirrels around here, so just they were birds. back there. Yeah, they were back there. Oh yeah. <laughs> all right guys if you enjoyed the video give it a thumbs up thank you so much for always watching and uh, being a part of this channel and uh, I love you so thank you also subscribe below if it was your first time and check out Chris the girl's video she's working on it as she would say she's got her camera right there uh, there's a link in the description below and also I'll post a link to her video in the comment uh, I'll pin that comment below as well thank you had a great day with this girl right here and with you guys, and I don't want to leave. I don't. I don't either, but there's much ahead. Bucky's oh, ahead. There's a Bucky's around here? There is a Bucky's around what? here. What? There is much ahead. Oh, yeah. But first, know you're awesome, know you're loved, and no matter who you are, where you're going through, where you're from, where you've been, no matter what, there's always much ahead for you. That's right. All right. See you later. Buckies. Bye. We like to bucky bucky. We like to bucky bucky. We like to bucky bucky. Second bucky in less than a week. That's right, bucky. Okay, last video we compared the buckies to the stuckies pecan logs. This time I got the frosted one. Pecan divinity. Okay, it's over. Yep. Here we go. We're going back to Tampa. We got yep. two and a half hours. Gotta go back, edit this video, be up tomorrow, and film another one. Yep. I love it. I love you, Bucky. I love you so much. Yeah. Much ahead. Ready?